update for you now to that earthquake we brought you at the top of the newscast. Magnitude 5.1 striking in Southern California just an hour after a 3.6 quake. And we've had a lot of aftershocks after that. So this thing centered about 20 miles southeast of LA. And we are talking about a lot of new developments with this now. Fullerton PD is saying we have several water main breaks in that area, lots of broken windows. There's a rock slide being reported by the California Highway Patrol near Brea. And we're we're told evacuations are taking place at Disneyland. Earlier today, when this all started happening, Something's AM seem a little weird uh, with a name like Jellyfinger, that's for sure. <laughs> anyway, it looks like you have a little bit of a fever, a cough, and some uh, body aches. Mm -hmm. I was on vacation last week, but I'm not feeling so well since I got back. Well, let's see, let's take a look. Let's see. Okay, open up and say ah. Uh. Uh, uh, your throat looks fine. It uh, seems like it's probably a virus. It's only been a few days. Uh, give us a call in a week or so if you're uh, not feeling better. Okay. Um, any suggestions for the cough? Um, lot, probably lots of water and uh, get get some rest. Uh, any okay. other questions? I don't think so. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Um, she was seen about a week ago. She was told that if her symptoms progress, that she should be seen again. Hopefully. Okay. What is her name? Um, Bryn. Oh yeah, she did. Jellyfinger. She saw Jellyfinger, right? Yeah. Okay. Weird name guy. Okay. Luckily, he is here today, so he can he can see you again and check up on on what what's not doing well and um, repeat any exams he might need to repeat. That'd be great. Thank you. Okay, you can just take a, sh a seat over there, and it should only be a couple minutes. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Bryn. Hi. Uh, you had some symptoms change, huh? Yeah. Um, what's, uh, what's, what have your symptoms done? Um, I've been getting chills and night sweats. I'm so tired. I feel like I'm like out of breath. Um, I also have that rash on my back. It's gotten a lot worse. Mm, yeah, your condition has worsened severely. Uh, we need to get a chest x-ray uh, to check for pneumonia. Um, I'll call the nurse and have her take your x-ray. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay, she'll be right in. Okay. Hi. Hi, Bren. Um, uh, have you ever had a chest 
x-ray before? Yeah, I have actually. I've had pneumonia a couple of times because of my lupus. I have had to take a lot of immunosuppressants. Okay, all right. Well, um, then I'd have you come with me and... Um, uh, oh, yes, I, f I forgot all about that. Well, uh, well, let's take a look and get the chest x-ray with you. Okay. You want to just come with me then? Sure. Now that your x-ray has been taken, um, the doctor will be in shortly to go over the results with you. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Hi, Andrea. I got your uh, results back. Uh, looks like we're going to need to admit you right away. Um, your, uh, your autoimmune condition can be uh, severely complicated by the pneumonia. So it's pneumonia? Uh, undoubtedly. Uh, we need to start you on antibiotics. Okay, are you sure it's bacterial pneumonia? Because I don't really like taking medication if it's unnecessary. Yeah, I think, I think you're correct about that. Um, we'll need to do some blood work uh, once we have you admitted. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so far and uh, we need to take a lung biopsy uh, just to be sure uh, before we start you on any treatment. Uh, the antifungal medications we need to give you can be rather damaging. Okay um, and what about this rash? Can we do anything about it? Because it hurts just lying here. Uh, we should probably take a biopsy for that too um, until we know what we're working with. Uh, there isn't a lot we can offer you besides uh, like Tylenol. Okay well hopefully Tylenol will help. Uh, I'll send in the nurse uh, to help you with the uh, biopsy. Okay, thank you. Okay. Hi, Bruce. Hi. Uh, Tony here is going to give you something to make you a little uh, sleepy, and then we're going to do the biopsy. Um, we're going to film that um, because we don't see that here very often in uh, this area. Okay. Uh, so if that's okay, uh, we're going we're to get started then. Okay.
Hi. Looks like we have your results here. Okay. What do you know? Well, everything we need to know, it looks like. Um, you have coccidial mycosis. Or, or valley fever. Uh, it's a fungal infection of uh, the genus Coccidioides. Um, your lung biopsy showed the presence of this fungus growing in your lungs, uh, which basically caused the pneumonia. Um, your blood test showed a highly increased uh, white blood cell count, uh, so you definitely have quite the infection going on. Okay, um, so do you think that my friend has it too? Uh, no, it's not contagious. Um, and most uh, most healthy people uh, can fight it off. Uh, your immune system kind of uh, helped uh, in you acquiring it. Um, let's see, many times the infection uh, clears up on its own within a couple of weeks. Um, it seems that she never had severe symptoms from what I've seen her. Um, most people don't have to come in at all because they feel like they just have a cold or something like that. Um, just clears up and goes away. It's um, like the results here. Um, you got a weakened immune system, so you're a perfect candidate for, uh, for an advanced form of this infection. Okay, uh, well, what can we do? I mean, I don't really like taking medication if it's unnecessary. Yeah, it looks like uh, we need to start you on an antifungal medication. Um, there's several options that we have. Uh, I'm going to uh, prescribe uh, amphotericin uh, B. Uh, this disrupts the cell membrane of the coccidioides cells. Uh, unfortunately, the membrane of your cells is quite similar to the membrane of the fungus, so there are some side effects. Uh, you may have nausea, uh, vomiting, diarrhea, uh, abdominal pain. Uh, if we don't start doing any med medication, this could progress, uh, progress to the point where you won't survive. Uh, if it doesn't uh, kill you, you'll be in some significant amount of pain, un unable to breathe well, and have open wounds in your skin for the rest of your life. Uh, so, uh, it could also progress to numerous other body systems, so I definitely okay. suggest um, that you take it. <laughs> okay, so um, the medication, I take it, and it's never coming back again, right? Uh, possibly. Unfortunately, we can't guarantee that you won't relapse. Uh, this will likely con uh, control things, but it may not cure them entirely. Um, it may take weeks or months for your symptoms to disappear. Um, there's a small chance that you'll have chronic pneumonia from this. Uh, don't be surprised if your joints are uh, achy for a long time. Well, that's not good at all. <laughs> well, it could, it could have been worse, since believe it or not. Uh, so far, we don't think you have a bone infection or meningitis, but both of those could have happened. Uh, the infection can overtake your respiratory system, nervous system, integumentary system, lymphatic system, and skeletal skeletal system. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, I'll have the nurse come in and uh, start you on it. Uh, she'll give you some more information. Um, okay. Yeah. All right, I will send her in for you. Okay. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Hey, um, can I have your name and date of birth, please? Brent Burkhart, uh, 3-2-1993. Okay. All right. Great. Uh, this is some antifungal medication for you okay. to take, and you will have to be treated for several, several months uh, on this medication. And we may need to do like another uh, lung biopsy uh, at a later date just to check the progress and, and how the treatment is going. So. Okay. That's fine. I just want to feel better. Okay. Is it possible for me to get my friends and family sick? Oh, no. It's not contagious. Uh, the only way that people can get this is with a dust containing the fungus and not from an actual person, um, to person to person contact or animal to person. So okay. you're, you're safe visiting okay. family and friends. So okay. Do you think I could have even avoided this at all? Not really. The best way to uh, avoid getting valley fever is to stay away from the areas that would have this uh, fungus. Mm -hmm. And um, luckily it doesn't progress in uh, so terribly in people. And they don't really need to worry about avoiding it so much. Um, if you were like African American or, or uh, Philippine, um, origin of a background, um, those are the people that would uh, are more likely to get this as well as somebody who's um, autoimmune suppressed. Mm -hmm. Okay, well I guess I know I where I won't be going on vacation. Yeah, you want to avoid uh, the southwest corner of the United States. As, uh, you can also get it in the middle of the U.S. and Mexico. Okay, wow, why have I never heard of this before? Well, there, actually last summer there was, a, there was a prison that had an outbreak of yellow fever and they had to move uh, a lot of the inmates there. So. That's a lot of people. How did they do that? 
well. Uh, they, it was a long, difficult process, but they only moved the inmates that were at high risk. And although, although there isn't an outward appearance to show like a marker that someone is sensitive to this illness, the inf infection rate was way higher in those prisons than in normal population. Okay. So. Wow, that's scary. I'm glad I'm here. It's safe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, that's right. Well, um, uh, well, I'll get you all packed up and on your way and get you feeling better. Okay, thank you. You're welcome.